let's let's open let's open the session with the word of prayer father we just thank you once again tonight we thank you lord for for affording us this moment that we 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 can come together father god on this tuesday night and, and fellowship around your way so we can learn more so we can learn father god from you what you have for us tonight we thank you for teaching us on sunday about about the principle of environment and lord we trust you even again father god for tonight's session that lord you, you, you you will give us the articulation, Father God, to express, Father God, even the mysteries of the gospel. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence in this place. And if you believe it, come on, somebody right there. Come on, type amen. Let's get on to it. Let's get on to it. Oh, yes. Let me just drop down the volume for the song. Oh, oh yes. Now I'm going to need this. Let me, let me just. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, as I introduce myself, my name is Churchill Siladule. I am a born again child of God. Man, I love the Lord with all my heart. Oh, I, 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 I love the Lord. I love the Lord with everything within me. I love the Lord with all my heart. And sorry about it. And I'm excited about this session where, where, where we, 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 tonight, man, we, we just want to go deeper. You know, on Sunday, we established, we established a thought. And on Sunday, maybe let me just recap for about for the first five minutes. Let me just recap even for for the sake of those who were not with us on Sunday, who haven't gotten the chance, you know, to even watch, you know, the teaching. I'm glad the teaching now is available on YouTube. You can go to YouTube on my YouTube channel, Churchill Seladula is the only Churchill Seladula on YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss even some of the other, you know, the, the other teachings that I have there. I mean, let's... Let's just have a good time in the word of the Lord, man. And but, but tonight we will be dealing with part two of the principle of environment. So, quick recap. A quick, a quick re, uh, recap. On Sunday, we established an abstract that there is nothing such as, uh, there is nothing such as a wrong environment. Environments are never wrong. But every environment exists to serve the purpose no, every environment serves the, a, a particular purpose to its I, to its designated occupants. Yes, now it's coming out very nicely. Every environment exists to serve a particular purpose to its designated occupants or inhabitants. Meaning, for every environment is designed or exists to serve the occupants of that environment and foreign occupants or foreign inhabitants, foreign objects, to foreign objects, the environment become disastrous or even worse, detrimental or, or, or even fatal. And, and we made an example on Sunday as we're recapping. I made an example on Sunday that, for example, water as an environment, water is, is, is a good environment, but it's good for the designated occupant for the occupants that are designed to exist in the water. And I mentioned that water is good for fish, but water is fatal for humans. Why? Because humans are not designed to live in water. Yes, we can use water to bath, we can use water to cook, water, we can drink water, and we, 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 we can go in, in the water, in the pool, you know, just just for some fun, but we are not designed to do in the water what the fish, the crocodiles, and the sharks are designed to do because that's not our ideal environment. Water is good for fish, but it's bad. It's fatal for humans. Water is good for boats, but it's fatal for, it's disastrous for cars. So we made an example that there is no such a thing as a bad environment. I'm telling you, even night, even the darkness, even the night, you see now, it's, it's, it's almost night. Night, there's nothing wrong with the night. The night is a good environment. The only thing that's wrong is the placement, the misplacement of objects in environments they were not designed to live in, in environments they were not designed to operate in. Night is not the time for you to be standing outside in the corners. Night as, a, as an environment is good for the stars because stars shine better at night. Watch this. Watch this. Did you know that stars, when... When the sun rises, the stars do not move. No, stars are there. But because light is not a conducive for the stars, you know, to shine. We don't see stars during the day, but they are there. You see, we see them at night. Oh my good, Churchill, get out of there. Uh, another point that we made on Sunday that I, 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 want, I, I want to carry it over to tonight's session. Another point that we made on Sunday is the fact that 
Oh man, oh, oh man, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for coming in. Maybe, you know, I, I want to do, I, I really want to do justice. Yes, I acknowledge Pastor Dumi, Mbulu, Mbuli, and I acknowledge Sis Nolotando and, and Mr. Donald. Oh man, it's good to have you, my friend. <laughs> Sis, Sis Mkulu, PK, we, we are taking it further, my sister. We we don't want the fire to die down. Sis Nantobego, it's good to have you. Pastor Chris, oh man, Mr. Chris, oh, I, I, thought, I, I thought it's Chris from Kabeha. I'm telling you, Matapel, we, we were taking this thing further, man. <laughs> we are taking this thing further. You know, I, I just can't get over what the Lord did on Saturday. So I just want to stay the fire to keep it going. Why? So that what we experienced on Saturday becomes our reality, even it's the event that God concluded, but not the not the encounter, man. Oh, oh my ah, church will come out of there. So, yes, on Sunday, as we're recapping quickly, on Sunday, we establish a thought one that there's nothing like there is no wrong environment, but there is a but there is a wrong placement of products that are not designed for the environment. And, and then I showed us that in the creation, we dealt with the creation account that reveals the order of importance. That according to Genesis 1, how God the Christian account reveals that environment precedes occupants. Ooh, habitat precedes inhabitants. You see, God spent the first two days, God spent the first two days of, of the creation account just, just busy making environment. And we learn that Genesis 1 says, teaches us, reveals the darkness as an environment, reveals the water as an environment, reveals uh, uh, the light as an environment. God said, let there be light. There was light. And God, from the waters, God commanded the waters to separate. There was the waters above and the waters beneath. And see what I mean? And in between, God, that's where God established the vault, which he called the sky. The environment, that's the gas environment. The sky is the environment for the stars. And, and God commanded the waters to to collect themselves and, and dry ground to appear. And then we realize that the first two days of creation account, God was revealing to us the importance or the priority of environment over occupants, the priority of the habitat over the inhabited. God always starts with environment before he brings in the things that are going to live in the environment. That's where we learn the principle of environment. And then we learn number three, three, that we learn that God commanded the environment to bring forth its occupants, God commanded the habitats to bring forth its inhabitants. Watch it. God, oh my goodness, watch it. God commanded the waters to bring forth the sea creatures. All of them. God commanded the ground to bring forth the trees and the, and the living animals. All, all, all kinds. Watch it. And then we learn that God... God said, let there, be, let there be lights in the vault, the skies. The Bible clearly says, God then, God placed... God placed the stars in the sky. It's God who placed them there. Why? Because God knows that anywhere else, the stars won't shine bright. And, and, and then right there, we pause a little bit on Sunday and we ask the question, that is it possible that you are not shining not because you're not gifted enough? Is it possible that you are not shining not because you're not anointed enough? Is it possible that you are not shining not because of any other reasons, but because you are trying to operate in an environment that you are not designed to operate in? Oh my goodness, that, that, that was something serious for me too. God, the creator, the best thing that the manufacturer can do for a product is after he has designed or created the product to place it in its ideal environment. Then we learned, number four, as I'm recapping five points, number four, we learned then that when God wanted the stars, God spoke to the sky. When God wanted the fish, God spoke to the water. When God wanted the, the animals and the trees, God spoke to the ground. When Church, slow down. When God wanted the stars, he spoke, he placed them in the sky. Why? Because the sky is the place where they come from. Number two, is the place where they must live in. Is the place where they must be fed in. Is the place where they must grow in. Is the place when they die, they go back to. When God wanted the fish, he spoke to the waters. Why? Because the water is the place where the fish comes from. The water is the place where the fish must live. The water is the place where the fish must be fed. The water is the place where the fish must mature. The water is the place when the fish die, they go back to. When God wanted the, 
the plants and the animals. God spoke to the ground. Why? Because the ground is the place where the plants and the animals come from. The ground is the place where the plants and the animals, oh my goodness, are fed. The ground is the place where the animals thrive. The ground is the place where the plants and the ground is the place where plants and animals, when they die, they go back to. Watch it now. So when God and then we, we, we made another point, 4.2. 4 we made a point that when you remove a star from the sky, it disappears. Why? You took it out of its ideal environment. When you remove a, flea, a fish from the water, it dies. Why? You took it out of its ideal environment. When you remove a plant from the ground, it dries up. Why? You took it out of an ideal environment. So we learned when God wanted... When he wanted the stars, he spoke to the sky. When he wanted the fish, he spoke to the water. When he wanted the plants, he spoke to the ground. Watch it. But when he wanted you and I, he didn't speak to the sky. He didn't speak to the water. He didn't speak to the ground. But he spoke to himself. The same way he said, let the sky, oh my goodness, let the firmament bring forth the light. The same way he said, let the waters bring forth the fish. The same way he said, let the ground bring forth the plants and the animals. He said, let us, let us make men, let us bring forth men. Oh my goodness. It means God's presence is an ideal environment for mankind. Oh my goodness. Watch this. The same way. When you remove a star from the sky, it disappears. The same way when you remove a fish from the water, it dies. The same way when you remove a plant from the ground, it dries up. You and I, one step outside of God's presence. Woo! One step outside of God's presence, like the star, we disappear. One step out of God's presence, like the fish, we die. One step out of God's presence, like the plant, we dry up. And then we made a point that is that your spiritual life, where your spiritual life is, the condition of your spiritual life can be explained not by the sermons of your pastor, not by the worship encounter in your church, but by the environment you live in Monday to Friday. Woo! That's where the problem is. Your problem is not the sermons. Your problem is that you are living in, you are not living in your ideal environment. Oh my goodness. Right there, right there, I can shout amen right there. I mean, if we're in church and I had the band, right there, I'd say, come on, somebody, take three minutes and let's just give God crazy praise right there. Why? Because as the master builder, as our manufacturer, as our creator, he ensured that he doesn't just bring us on earth and not prepare an environment for us. Anywhere else, it's not ideal for us. Let me, oh my goodness, my time, my time. Number five, recap, number five. Then we learn that Genesis 1, 28, when the Bible says, and God blessed them, who? Adam and Eve, mankind. No, 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 slow down. Genesis 2, verse 8. Genesis 2, verse 7. The Bible says, God formed men, you and I, the body. God formed men from the dust of the ground. Meaning your body comes from the dust. The ground is an environment from which your body comes from. The ground is an environment from which your body will be fed. The ground is an environment in which your body we leave the ground is an environment in which when you die your body goes back to the ground so after god formed man genesis chapter 2 verse 7 oh much good was pardon me i'm moving fast because i'm rushing someone when god finished forming the body man was just a corpse lying on the ground you were perfect on the ground but watch it in, but the bible says god then then god breathed his breath into man, into the nostrils. Then man became a living being. As a living being, woo, the ground was no longer a conducive environment. Why? Because the breath doesn't come from the ground. The breath comes from God himself. So it means woo, the living being needs the presence of God. Oh my goodness. Lord, what are you doing to me tonight? Don't, oh my goodness. And verse number eight, the Bible says, after God breathed, he formed you, you were fine on the ground. But after he breathed his breath in you, the Bible says, then God placed the man in the garden of Eden. And we learn that the word Eden comes from the Hebrew word Aden, which simply means a spot, a moment, the presence, open gate, delightful place. The word Aden comes from, the, comes from Hebrew. 
the hip the word adian is a hebrew word hebrew is written in five stroke and each stroke means the first stroke means spot the second stroke means moment the third stroke means a, 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 a presence the fourth stroke means a open gate the fifth stroke means a delightful place so eden can be defined as a spot for a moment where the presence of god is an open gate to a delightful place if you were with us on saturday at the egruleni worshippers forum you would attest to us you would attest to this truth that oh my goodness on that saturday night god gave us we were we were on the spot man we were on the spot and, and, and we had a moment where the presence of God was an open door to a delightful place. We were in such, we were in a delightful, oh, oh, Churchill, leave, leave, leave Egrulani's things. Let's deal with the environment. So now that God has placed men that he has formed in the garden, then we establish a truth that when God declared a blessing on Adam and Eve, according to Genesis 1 verse 28, when the Bible says, and God blessed them and said, one, be fruitful, increase, multiply, now, be fruitful, multiply, increase or fill the earth, subdue and dominion, and, dom and have dominion and dominate. God declared the fivefold blessing on mankind who was in his presence. Anywhere else, this fivefold blessing won't manifest. And then we learn, oh my goodness, we learn that Genesis 3, Adam and Eve sinned, God punished them. So God chased them away from the environment that is ideal for their for their manifestation, the, the environment that is ideal for, for, for their thriving. The Bible says God banished them. Genesis 4, Cain and Abel, the first murder happened not in an ideal environment. The first murder happened outside of an ideal environment. Oh man, my time, my time. Oh my goodness. Watch it. Then we see, we, we learn that from Genesis 4 all the way up until Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. Tetelus died and he died. And the curtain was torn in, in, in the curtain in the temple that was torn that separated the holy of holies and the holy place from Genesis 4 all the way to that moment. We were existing outside of our ideal environment. Oh my goodness. When the curtain was torn, that was God saying, Now I'm opening the way back. Because from Genesis 4 all the way to that moment. All that we did, we could only we could only hang with God for a moment. Cain and Abel, Genesis 4, they brought their worship, not in the garden, but at the gate. The Bible says after God banished Adam and Eve, he placed a seraphim with a flaming sword. What was a flaming sword in the garden of Eden was a hanging curtain in the tabernacle. Woo! What was Oh, oh, somebody, oh, come on now, come on, come on, s s somebody tweet this. What was a flaming sword? What was a flaming sword in the Garden of Eden? Anyway, anyway, let me continue, let me continue. I'm back, I'm back. Yeah, I think, I, I think it started. I, I got my cable in. Yeah, so, so, so praise the Lord. So, as I was mentioning, that what was a flaming sword in the Garden of Eden was actually... The hanging curtain in the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. so, so, so pardon me, because I, I'm just continuing where the broadcast, you know, got, got messed up. So, yeah, we're talking about the, the principle of environment. The principle of environment. So, so tonight, I, I, I want to take us a, a little bit further. Oh, this this is the part that I wanted to explain. That in the part that I, I wanted to explain. Hey, 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 Bishop Pullen, good to have you, my friend. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a good friend of mine, my brother from another mother. In California, in Oakland, California, USA. Good to have you, my brother, my dear brother. That what we have learned that when God declared a blessing on Adam and Eve in Genesis 1:28, He was speaking to mankind in His presence, mankind in His ideal environment. And Genesis 3, Adam and Eve, they sinned. God banished them. They were banished out of the garden. And and, and this is the statement that I made before our, our broadcast got in, got cut off. That from Genesis 4 all the way to to Jesus' death when he said it is finished, mankind was living outside of his ideal environment. Mankind was living outside of his ideal environment. And, and But when Jesus said it is finished, the Bible says the curtain was torn from top to bottom. And that was God saying, that was not God saying I'm coming out. God did not need to come out of nothing. But it was God saying, 
Remember when I banished Adam and Eve in Genesis 3? I placed an angel with a flaming sword to block the way back. And when I told Moses to build a tabernacle where my ark, the ark of the covenant was, I hanged a curtain, as I mentioned earlier. What was a flaming sword in, in the garden of Eden was, was a hanging curtain in, in the tabernacle. So when Jesus said, it is finished, Jesus paid the price. And God says, now I'm opening the way back into the garden. No, 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 no. When the curtain was torn, that was not God saying, I'm coming out. Because God was not stuck outside. Inside, no. It's us who were stuck outside. Oh, goodness. Churchill, Churchill men, you're going to have to help us here. God was not stuck in the box, in the hole of holies. No, 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 no. no. Oh, my goodness. It's us who were stuck. It's us who were stuck outside because it's us who were banished from the best place where we could ever be, from the best place where our blessing is, man. So when Jesus said it is finished, Jesus was Jesus, Jesus was saying, Father, I've, I've fulfilled the law. It is finished. Now open the gate. The Bible says the curtain was torn and God was saying, now you can come back here. This is the reason. This is the reason for the broadcast that brethren, the way back to our ideal environment has been made possible by the death of the Lord Jesus. Now that the way has been made possible, what's what's blocking us? It's not that the environment is not available. It's not that the way is not there. Jesus said, I am, watch it, the way, I am, the truth, I am, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is, oh my, oh my God, Jesus' is death, the purpose of his death was to, was to pay the price for the removal of the angel with the flaming sword, was to pay the price for, for the tearing of the curtain that blocked the relationship. Oh my goodness. When you study Genesis 4, Cain and Abel, in, I mentioned on Sunday that Genesis 4 is the establishment of religious worship. Worship of the idea that we part the thought. Let me tell you this. Worship was never meant to be a place we go to. It was never meant to be something we do. No. Worship was designed to be a natural response because of the environment we live in. Oh my goodness. And I made mention that there is one of the reasons why worship in heaven, it never ends. It never ceases. My goodness. It's because in heaven, they, they never go to worship. There's no time for worship as if there's time for other things. Why? In heaven, worship is continuous. It's ceaseless because the worshipers live in the environment of the worshipped. They live in constant awareness of the one they are worshipping. The reason why I worship is like a submarine worship. It appears Sunday morning and it disappears Monday to Saturday night. It's because we are only conscious of God's presence on Sunday. Oh, Now let me move on. That, that was just me trying to recap from, from Sunday. But for tonight, because, you know, I've already taken about 25, 30 minutes of your time. I'm just going to run for this next 20, 25, 30 minutes and just drop with on you what the Lord has laid in my heart to share with you. One of the points that we made mention, that's going to be my springboard for tonight. We made mention on the on part one, the video is available on YouTube. Please make time and listen to that video. It's going gonna, it's gonna to bless you. It's going to edify your spirit. One of the points that we made mention is that now that God has placed us in the ideal environment, which is his presence, the enemy's tactic is not to fight us in the presence. No, the enemy's tactic is not to interfere with us in the presence. No, the devil's tactic is to fish us out of the presence first. Yes, he doesn't come safe to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But his tactic, his modus operandi, his MO is not, <coughs> excuse me, is not to launch the attack while we are in the presence. Because in the presence, he can touch us. He can touch us in the present, but he has to fish us out first. Huh? He uses the bait of the things oh my, of this world to fish you out of the present. If he can keep you out of the present, then he can mess up. He, he can tamper with you. But watch, we mentioned that fish in its ideal environment in the water. You, you can't do nothing to fish in its in its ideal environment. But for us to have sushi. 
<laughs> for us to have seafood. Then the wise fisherman needs to identify the bait. Oh my goodness. He can use to entice a particular fish and throw the bait in the fish environment, the water. The fish, by due to the fish lack of discernment, the fish gets enticed by the bait, not knowing that this bait, oh my goodness. The fish sees the worm, but it does not see the hook. When the fish bites the worm, then the fisherman pulls the fish out of the environment. All you need to do is to take the fish out of the water. You are done with it. The moment the fish is out of the water, we have sushi. Done. So the moment the devil fishes you out of the presence of the, of the Lord, he has sushi. He is done with you. So that's why the devil does not temper with us in the presence, but he has to lay us out, fish us out of God's presence, and then the moment we are out of the present, the worst of life happens to us. The moment Adam and Eve were banished from the garden, they gave birth to, to, to Cain and Abel. Genesis 4, the first matter happened. Where? Watch it now. The first matter happened outside of the ideal environment. Now, this is the part. Battles are best tackled in favorable conditions. Every fighter... Every opponent stand a better chance of winning if the opponent can pull you to their ideal environment. Meaning they are pulling you out of your ideal environment into their ideal environment. This is the word for tonight. If I can drop this, we can lock off and maybe see on Sunday evening for part three. Because I'm sensing in my heart, this teaching is going to go for, for, for some time. Because there's so much that the Lord wants us to draw from, from these teachings. Battles are best tackled in favorable conditions. Wise fighters, oh my goodness, they'll make sure that they pull you out of your ideal environment into their ideal environment. Why? Because ideal environment gives us home ground advantages. Oh my goodness, I'm going to teach this thing. I'm going to teach this thing up until 7. Watch it now. For example, have you observed crocodiles? Crocodiles are, are sea creatures. They come from the water. Oh my goodness. When a crocodile wants to eat something and it first observes either the zebra or the springbok or the leopard drinking from the bank of the river, the crocodile comes in slow. The crocodile does not attempt to chase a springbok on dry land. Why? Because dry land is the springbok is the springbok's ideal environment. Oh my goodness. Lord help me teach this. But the water is the crocodile's ideal environment. Oh, let me say this again. <coughs> Excuse me. Dry ground, dry land is the springbok's ideal environment. The river is the crocodile's ideal environment. The one who's able to put the other into, out of their ideal environment, into his and ideal environment, is the one that wins the battle. So the crocodile will take its time. Oh my goodness. The crocodile will take its time. And once the crocodile realizes that he's in a striking radius, <coughs> the crocodile, one, all the crocodile wants, needs to do is to grab the springbok with the mouth or the leg or the tail, whatever, and pulls the, the springbok out of the dry land, which is the springbok's ideal environment, into the river, which is the crocodile's ideal environment. Why? The moment the crocodile pulls the springbok or, or, or the zebra or, 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 or the buffalo into the river, it's, it's case closed for the buffalo. Why? Because the crocodile can breathe in the water. But the springbok can't breathe in the water. Why? Because the water is not the environment from which the springbok comes from. The water is not environment from which the zebra comes from. The water is not the environment from which the buffalo comes from. But the water is the crocodile's home ground advantage. Oh man, I need, I need to drill this in. The reason why time and again the devil defeats us is not because the devil is powerful. No, he has no power. The book of Colossians teaches us that he was stripped of all the power and Jesus made a public spectacle of him. He is powerless, but he's a schemer. He's smart. 
The devil is a smart fish. The crocodile fish will the crocodile fishes the zebra out of the dry, dry land into the water. Why? Because all the devil needs to do to you is to take you outside of your ideal environment into his. No wonder then Paul says, do not conform. Ooh, the world is an environment. The world is our environment. Do not conform to the pattern of the world. Why? Because the moment the world fishes you out of the world, oh, Israel, once the world, once the devil fishes you out of God's word into the world, stand with you. Stand with you. You see what I mean? So battles are not decided by strength, but battles are decided by territories, by environment. Where are you fighting from? Where are you fighting from? Oh my goodness. Watch this. Now, let me show you something. That the moment we come back to the environment God designated for us, which is his presence 24-7, listen, on Sunday, I made an example that can you imagine a fish that says, I, me, I, me, I'm tired of the water. Me, I'm tired of the water. I, I, I need life. I need to breathe. The moment the fish decides that the fish is tired of the water and it can only go to the water on Sunday morning between 8 and 10 or 10 and 12, the fish is dead. It's dead. So the moment you and I only think about the presence of God on Sunday morning, we are gone. We won't survive this life. Why? Battles are decided by territories, by environments. Where are you fighting from? Remember the Bible in the book of Galatians, the Apostle Paul, when he talks to us about dealing with the desires of the flesh, sexual immorality, pride, you name them. The advice he gives us, the Apostle Paul does not say, try your best to fight the desires of the flesh. Try your best to fight the desires of the flesh. No, he says, come back to the environment and the desires of the flesh will fall away. This is how he says it. He says, walk by the spirit. The spirit is our environment. Walk by the spirit and you will not... Oh my goodness, ah, come on now. Come on, somebody type amen, man, come on. You, 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 you got to agree with me. This is good food, man. This is good food. He doesn't say, try five steps, five steps to defeating the addiction of pornography. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. There are no five steps for nothing. There's only one step. Come back to the ideal environment. Come back to the presence of the Lord. If you come back to the presence Oh my goodness. Paul is saying, come back to the ideal environment. Come back to the Eden. Once you come back to the ideal environment, you will not. <laughs> Praise God for psychology. Praise God for academics. Oh my goodness. But over time, those five steps, those three steps, those seven steps won't keep you for long. I know I'm a living witness. I used to struggle with pornography. Me, yes, your boy Churchill. Yes, the author. Yes, the founder of Churchill Academy. <laughs> yes, the worship leader. <laughs> yes, the international speaker. <laughs> yes, the best-selling author. <laughs> I used to struggle with pornography. Like, like, like bad. Like so bad, man. So bad. Struggle with pornography. You remember those, those ETV shows? Remember those those ETV shows called Emmanuel? Oh man, I used to be a fan of those things. Oh my goodness. I used to struggle with pornography. Like seriously, man. I'd stay up at night, 11, 12, 1, watching that, that pornographic thing. You know, busy feeding the flesh. Desires of the flesh, man. Strangling me. Python spirit. Strangling the, the life, the godly life out of me. Sunday morning, I'm back on the stage. I'm leading worship. Ooh, good rough. Hey, I used to be there. I know what I'm talking about. I tried the three steps. I tried the five steps. I tried the seven steps. The steps work for a few minutes, few days, few weeks, and then I'm back again. 
because I'm trying to fight, watch it now, the desires of the flesh in a fleshly environment. There's no way you're going to win. Oh, until I learned that walk by the Spirit. Oh, I had to come back to the environment. The day I came back from the environment, that's the day I, that's the day I experienced my deliverance. My deliverance was found in the presence of the Lord, not in the five steps suggested by a psychiatrist. Nothing wrong with psychology. I love psychology. I'm a fan of psychology. I study psychologists. But I'm telling you that when you're dealing with serious life battles, psychology does not deal with the root. But the day I came back into the presence, into the ideal environment, Paul says, walk by the Spirit and you will not. The day I started walking by the Spirit, no, by the Spirit, I did not. Oh, I'm free. Free. You too can be free. How? Come back to the ideal environment. Oh my goodness, right there, right there. I feel a praise break right there. Thank you, Lord. Who? Thank you for your presence. Oh my goodness. Thank you for your presence that deliver us. Because battles are not won by strength, but battles are won by home ground, by environmental advantages. Who? Battles are not won by strength. Oh, I'm feeling the word of the Lord in this place. This is not what I had. This is not what I had on my notes. I've got my, my laptop right here. But I'm sending. This is the word for somebody. Someone who's listening to me right now. This is the word for you. That addiction that you're struggling with. Come back into the presence. Oh my goodness. Come back into the presence of the Lord. Um, battles are not won by strength. Battles are won by environmental advantages. The same way the crocodile can't do nothing to a zebra on dry land. I saw a video of a leopard drinking water, and the crocodile came in there and snatched the leopard and pulled the leopard into the video. It was case closed. But the crocodile can't outrun a leopard on dry, on dry land. But a leopard in the, lep, in, the, in the crocodile territory, in the river, does not stand a chance. What is it that the enemy is using to fish you out? Oh my goodness. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm sending deliverance in this place. I've got so much to share, but you know, I, I'm struggling to move from this point. I'm struggling. There's something amazing by living in the right, in an ideal environment. The enemy can't do nothing. You can't outswim a shark in water, man. Ooh. You can't outsmart the devil in the world. You cannot. You can only outsmart him when you're in the word, not in the world. No wonder Paul said, do not conform to the standard or the pattern of the world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind by the word. Oh my goodness. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Let's come back to the presence. Let's come back to the presence. Oh man, Lord, I'm sending deliverance in this place. Come back to the, come on, start, reestablish the, 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 the environment of the presence of God in your home. Starting from tonight, establish the environment of the presence of God in your home. From tonight, from tonight, I'm telling you. When Jesus said, it is finished, he, God told it, the curtain. God said, now you can come in now. Woo! Everyone, you can come in. Come back. Oh, I'm talking to somebody tonight. Come back into the presence. Come back into the presence of God. Live your life in a constant conscious awareness of God's presence. Ooh, I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. It changed mine. It changed mine. Listen, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Your boy, Churchill, I've never been to a Bible school. I've never been trained formally on teaching the Bible. I've never been trained. It has always been my desire to go, but I couldn't for whatever reasons that, that hindered me. I've never been to a Bible school, but man, I'm in the presence of God. Oh my goodness. I'm always in the presence. I'm always sitting under the ministry of the word. I'm always listening to the word. I'm, I'm filling myself with the word that maintains the presence. I'm always conscious of God's presence. Oh my goodness. Because I live in that ideal environment where God placed me as mankind. The presence that to bring things out of me that Oh, Chichi, shut up. Started bring things out of me that are not even taught in schools, man. And please, don't misquote me. I'm not undermining schools. I'm not undermining Bible schools. I'm only trying to drive a point, and I'm using myself as an example. Me living in the present, the present has produced books out of me. Oh, my goodness. The present has produced 
things out of me that I couldn't, I may not have learned any other way. Something amazing about the presence of God. Now let me show you something. The Bible, in Mark chapter 4, talks about Jesus says to the disciples, let us cross over to the other side. Now I want to show you ooh, the blessings of living in the presence and the disadvantages of not living in the presence. In the boat, going to the other side, we've got Jesus who lives in the ideal environment for mankind, the presence of God. We've got the 12 the disciples who are not living in the present yet. What would happen? They're in the same boat. Same boat, same water, same conditions, but Jesus in the boat, the Bible says when the storm was beating against the boat and the water was filling in, the people who are living outside of their ideal environment started to panic. The man Jesus, who was living in his ideal environment, slept. How can you sleep when the water is coming in the boat? Yes, the water is coming into the boat, but the water in the boat is not the threat to the ideal environment, the presence of God. The water in the boat is a threat to everyone who is not in the presence. Oh my goodness. This is my turning point for tonight. I'm closing in the next 10 minutes. Watch it now. The water that was coming in the boat was a threat to everyone who is not living in their who was not living in their ideal environment. But the water was not a threat to Jesus. He was sleeping, man. Are you able to sleep in the storm? Or does the storm make you to start to establish new doctrines? The Bible says they were afraid. Oh my goodness. We have not been given the spirit of fear, Ooh, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Oh, the sound mind. Oh my, Churchill, Churchill, come on. Oh man, excuse me. I'm just getting blessed all by myself in my, in my home. The reason why sometimes you are fearful, whenever you are fearful, check your environment. Fear is a manifestation of an environment that is not ideal for you. Go back to the crocodile. The crocodile is not, af is not afraid of nothing when it's in the water. A shark is not afraid of nothing. A shark attacks any living thing that is in the ocean. Why? Because the shark is in its ideal environment. When you are in your ideal environment, nothing scares you, man. Hey! Fear is a byproduct of living outside of the presence of God. Ooh! Fear for lack Fear of the unknown. Oh my goodness. The Bible says Jesus was sleeping. Why? Because Jesus lived with the disciples, but he did not live in their environment. Oh my goodness. Let me teach you this. The Bible says Jesus woke up. He arose. And Jesus spoke from the environment. <laughs> Listen. My pastor taught me all the wonderful things Jesus did all while he was on earth. He did not do those things because he was the son of God. No. He did those things because he lived in an environment of impossibilities. Oh my goodness. Otherwise, how can he claim that we who believe in him can do what he did even greater if he did that because he was God the son? The things he did, he did not do them because he was God the Son. No, he did that because he was operating from a different environment. Let me prove it to you. And I'm going to close with this thought. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. John chapter 14. The verse we know. The verse we love to quote in funerals. John 14 is not a funeral, it's not, it's not a funeral verse. <laughs> It's, it's a verse that teaches truth. Let me show you this and then I'll close. Watch this. Ooh. We know the verse. John chapter 14 from verse 1. The Bible says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believed in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? My key verse is verse number 3. It says, And if I go, now listen to the language of the text. Oh, and if I go and prepare a place for you, Jesus said, I will come back and take you to be with me 
that you also may be where I am. Now, let's look at English. Jesus says, if I go, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Listen to the language of the text. He is talking to them face to face. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place, I am going, watch it. I am going future tense. Watch this. I will come back and take you to be with me. Watch it. That that you also may that you also may be future tense where I am present tense. I church and close this thing, man. Watch it. She has the same. I'm going to prepare a place for you. So that when I'm done preparing, I'm gonna come back and take you. Oh my goodness. So that you may also be. Because you are not there yet now. You will be where I am. I'm going to prepare a place for you so that I can bring you where I am. And he he's with them. He's talking to them, but he's going to prepare a place for them so they will be future tense where he is present tense. Why? He's not necessarily talking about geographical location. He's talking about environmental position. Ay, ay, my goodness. I'm going to love the Bible. Jesus is talking about environmental position. Oh, environmental position. The reason why when they freaked out in the boat, he was cool, calm, and collected is because where he was, the water is not a problem in the presence of God. Let me prove that, that where he was, the water is not a problem. Remember some other time after he told them to go over to the other side, he came walking on the water. Oh my goodness. He came walking on water. Because where Jesus lived, it was, a, it was an environment of impossibilities. Oh, the next chapter, chapter 5. Oh my goodness. Jairus come running to Jesus. Oh, my daughter is lying at the point of death. Jairus was not calling the man. Jairus was calling the environment. Hey, yo, oh, man, the laborer. Jesus was a walking heavenly hotspot. Oh, oh my. That, he was not just a man, but he was an environment. Wherever he showed up, everything Adam and Eve enjoyed in the garden before they sinned, manifested wherever Jesus showed up. Jairus came, come. When you invite Jesus in your life, you are not just inviting a religious concept. No, you are inviting an environment of impossibilities. Hey, brother Red, I can't exhaust this thing, yeah? Oh my goodness. Oh, watch it. Jairus said, come. My, Jesus said, I'll, I, I, I'll come with you to the house. If Jairus brought, if Jairus brought the girl to Jesus, Jesus would have healed him, healed the girl right there on the spot. But Jairus said, "Come to my house." Jesus went with him. Then something amazing happened. The woman with the issue of blood. The Bible says when she heard about the environment, <laughs> that the environment is gonna pass by your by your street or, or whatever the case may be, she said, "He." I'm not the one who invited him, but if only, watch it now, you know it, it says, if only I can touch, right, the hem of the government, praise God for the hem, but this is how I want you to see it, if only I can reach out my hand to that environment, oh, the presence of God did for the woman with the issue of blood, what the earthly environment could not do for her, ah, if you will come back to the presence, the presence will solve in an instant something you were struggling with for 12 years. That 12 year problem is a minor thing in the presence of the Lord. Oh, that child who's addicted to Nyawupe, drag that child into the presence. You'll see what the presence will do to the child. If the presence of God can solve a 12 year Issue of blood. Oh my goodness. The presence of God can deliver your child from Yahweh. Oh my goodness. If the presence of God can solve a 12 year problem, the presence of God can deliver your child, your daughter. Oh, oh my goodness. I call it environmental advantages. The presence of God is our ideal environment. 
I'm going to close now. My time is up. I'm going to close. And I pray that this has been a blessing to you as it has been a blessing to me. The principle of environment. God is calling us back to his presence. You see, it's this it's even more important now than ever. Because now that the churches are closed, but the present is not closed. The churches are closed. It's the buildings that are closed. It's the buildings that are closed, but not the presence. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Mahanda It's the building that is closed. The, the COVID restriction is in the building, not in the presence. Oh, my goodness. Let me say it again. The COVID restriction is in the building, not in the presence. Come back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sent by the Lord to teach this. So I can so I can recharge your spirit. Oh my goodness. To come back. Prioritize the presence of the Lord. Listen, I mentioned on Sunday that we were not meant to make time for the presence. No. We were meant to live in the presence and make time for everything else. See what I mean? Don't be so fixated on your career that you even struggle to make time for God. No, you are not too busy for God. You are too busy not to live in the present. Because outside of the present, you're going to eat the sweat of your brow. But in the present of the Lord, provision is effortless. I pray this word has been a blessing to you. Like it has been a blessing to me. Like I mentioned earlier, this is part two. Part one is available on YouTube. And part two, I'm going to load it in the next 30 minutes. So that if you want it, you can just check it again on YouTube. And please, just share this, man, with, with your friends. Share this with your family. I, I, I think I'm going to come back again. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I feel the power of God the more I teach this. It gets clearer even to me the more I share with you. Watch it. The word for tonight. Battles are not won by strength, but are won by environmental advantages. Lastly, when an eagle fights with a snake, if an eagle comes to the, to the ground, where, which is the territory of the snake, ooh, oh my goodness, birds do not come from the ground. Birds come from the sky. When God wanted the birds, he spoke to the guy. He said, let the, let, he said, let the sky be filled with birds. Ooh. The sky is the eagle's Home ground. So when an eagle fights with a snake, a cobra, whatever the case may be, on the ground, the eagle is disadvantaged. But when I watch National Geographic, the eagle will grab the snake and take it up to the sky. Why? In the sky, the eagle has agility. In the sky, the snake has no balance. <laughs> Environmental advantage. I'm telling you, child of God, Listen to what the Lord is saying through your, through your boy Churchill tonight. Listen to what the Lord is saying tonight. Battles are not won by strength or power. Battles are won by, by environmental advantages. Oh, I love you. I love you. Oh, please make time. Listen to this over and over again, man. Part one is available on YouTube. This one is going to go in tonight. I love you. Let us close. Let's, let me just close this, man. Let me just close with a word of prayer. Father, I just thank you tonight. Oh, I thank you for this moment you have given us tonight. Just to share your word. To remind us again, oh God, that when your son Jesus died on the cross, when he said it is finished, he meant that the way back to our ideal environment has been fulfilled. We thank you tonight for reminding us, oh God, that battles are not won by strength or power, but they are won by environmental advantages. Thank you for reminding us again tonight that your presence, oh God, is our home ground advantage. Oh, that's where you placed us, oh God. I pray, Father God, for everyone who tuned in tonight. That let I pray that this word, oh God, oh my goodness, Rabba Hassan, the Lembra, Gash, the Kete, the Bahashink. I pray this word, oh God, will find root in their hearts, oh God. I pray this word will edify someone else. Some, someone will be edified by this word, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I give you praise. I give you glory. Thank you for everyone who tuned in. I thank you even, Father God, for inspiring me to share, Father God, to take this time and share this word with your children. I give you praise, honor, and glory till I, I meet them again 